Well, good evening, Father Zod. I'm so excited to be with you this evening. I trust that you are ready for an awesome, awesome time as we get around God's Word and we are ready to receive what He has for you. All right? He has so much for us. We just have to ask Him. We have to open our hearts and receive. Lord, we come before you this evening. I pray right now that you're going to move by your Spirit in a mighty way. Lord, that we're not going to be the same again in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that as we come into this time of worship, Lord, that we will just receive from your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to come and touch us, come and work in our lives. And Father, we thank you that you are busy with something special in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, John, it's over to you. Let's worship. Looks like tonight The sky is heavy Feels like the winds Are gonna change Beneath my feet The earth is ready And I know it's time For heaven's rain It's gonna rain Living water we desire To flood our hearts with holy fire Rain down All around the world we're singing Rain down Can you hear the earth is singing Rain down All around your people singing heavy, feels like it's time to dream again, and I see the clouds, and yes I'm ready to dance upon this barren land.
grace on top of grace More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth Grace on top of grace How sweet the sound Once lost, now found Heaven came down and Grace rescued me Sin and penalty And at the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace Hallelujah, I am free From my sin and penalty And at the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace Come on! Lord, how you love me, I don't deserve grace on top of grace. More than I've asked for, more than I'm worth, grace on top of grace. Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. And at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace. Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty. And at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace. With your grace on top of grace. sound once lost now found heaven came down and grace rescued me how sweet the sound once lost now found heaven came down and grace rescued me come on how sweet the sound once lost and now found heaven came down and grace rescued me hallelujah I am free from my sin and penalty and at the cross you took my place with your grace on top of grace come on let's sing I am free from my sin and penalty And at the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace One last time Hallelujah, I am free from my sin and penalty And at the cross you took my place With your grace on top of grace with your grace on top of grace With your grace on top of grace Jesus oh The weapon may be formed but it won't prosper when the darkness falls, it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to try you My God will never fail Sing, my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, believe 
here tonight The battle belongs to Him There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war He wages He will win And I'm not backing down from any giant I know how the story ends Yes, I know how the story ends And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory
gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Jesus Oh, Jesus thank you for this time of worship we thank you lord that we could just get around your presence lord we thank you that you're working in our lives that you're bringing us to the place of destiny and purpose but lord i pray right now that as we genuinely push in with you lord that we will come into higher levels like we've never seen before lord i pray that you're going to bring us into a place that you have for us in jesus name and everybody said amen and amen well, folks, I'm always so excited to be with you. I want to welcome you, Gen uh, Generation Impact. All right, Father's Heart. All right, <laughs> I'm on Sunday night. All right, Father's Heart. Please excuse me. We have so many things happening. All right, and I just love God's people. I want to just say, you know, as I go around, I see the commitment of God's people, the hunger of God's people, and I am just so excited about what God is going to do in and through each believer. And so I want to say this, as we do what God has called us to do, I am expecting God to raise the level in each one of our lives. Amen. And so right now, I want to teach on our giving. I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 28, 27. It says this, he who gives to the poor will lack nothing, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. I want you to see that God promises spiritual principle to operate in our lives. Now I want to make this statement. Listen carefully. This is not for the saved only. This is for human beings. A lot of the multimillionaires and billionaires are givers. How many of them have a foundation that they are busy doing some good some way? And the Bible says this, if you give to the poor, you are going to lack for nothing. But if you are blind, turning a blind eye, you are going to have curses placed on your life. Now, does God place the curse? No, you do. If you go contrary to God's principles and God's blessing, His principles and blessing can't flow in your life. One of the issues that I have with Christians is this is that many of us want God to move, but we are not prepared to apply His principles. We half expect Him to come and do something. God is not going to do that. God's not going to just rock up and do something. He's expecting us as believers to apply the principles that He has required, that He has requested us and commanded us to follow. And so when we do this, we will see the blessing of the Lord. We will see the power of God. We will see the miracle hand of God in our lives. Now, I want to deal with this issue of helping the poor. If we give to the poor, God says that He's going to, uh, we're going to have lack nothing. Now, many times people have said to me, listen, we're just too busy or we don't get to the poor you know, our circle of environment, we're working, we don't have time to do this. How do we do this? I want to just say to you, if you're, if you're part of a church somewhere, and that church actually gives to the poor, then give to the church. Let them give to the poor to help you. All right? I want to say, yeah, at Father's Heart, we give to the poor all the time. Every single week we are giving to the poor. All right, we support soup kitchens. We support families in crisis. We've got all sorts of things running where we are trying to help and support wherever we can. And so, if you can't get to helping the poor and give to the poor, you are welcome to give to the church and just put the word poor as a reference. Okay? And we know this must go directly to the poor. And it goes. All right, and... And those people who know me, I have no problem giving. If I have the finance, I give. Why? Because God's going to bless everybody. I want that blessing on your life. 
I want you to be blessed. I want you to have the word of God operating in your life. I don't want you to have any lack. Now I want to make a statement. This is not part of your tithe. Be careful because some people are going, well, I'll just tithe to the poor. Be careful. That is not biblical either. All right. So you tithe and then you give to the poor. All right. Now, some people might be watching me. They're in another church. They could tie it to their church and say, listen, but I want to give to the poor to father's heart to get to where it goes. I want to say one thing. I'm very, very strict as to where that finance goes. I make sure that it goes to the right place. I make sure that it gets used for the right things. And so I want to just say that it's important and imperative that we are accountable when it comes to this kind of thing. Okay. We have to get the finance to people who really need it. And so that is something that we take very seriously. And so tonight I'm going to pray over our finance. I'm going to pray that as we are giving to the poor, God's principles are being applied and we're going to see the power of God move. Lord, we come before you today. And Lord, we thank you for your blessing and anointing to flow in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that we give to the poor. Lord, that each and every one of us will give to the poor and take care of them. Lord, I thank you for your principle that applies. Thank you, God, that we don't have curses in our lives, but God, that we have an abundance that flows in our lives because we have applied your principle. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, I want to remind you, the banking details are on screen, but remember this. If you're giving from outside of the country, just go to fathersart.co.za, click the donate button, it's the quickest, cheapest, and simplest form for you to give. Amen. All right. I want to get right into today's teaching. Tonight I want to teach on the topic entitled, God is not finished yet. God is not finished yet. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, all completed until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to just say this. God started the work in you. God has promised to finish the work in you. All right? We have to understand that this is an incredible, incredible statement. Okay? Now, do not think for one minute that you are responsible for completing your Christian walk. Do not think for one minute that you're even able to take the few steps by yourself. You know, many of us have got this idea, well, we can do this, we can overcome stuff, we can do whatever. I want to tell you that it's not going to happen like that. God started a work inside of me. He will complete it. God is not finished with me yet. Now, before we even go further, I want to set some gui uh, guidelines for us. Never judge somebody else on the issue that God's busy working with you on. Listen carefully. Never judge somebody else on the issue that God is working on you. Let me give an example. God could be working on you. And saying, listen, I need to deal with this element. I need to deal with this area. And so you want to then take it to somebody else and say, well, God's dealing with us. Instead of saying God's dealing with me, suddenly it's us and we all have to work on that thing. I want to say it does not work like that. God is working on each individual in his own process, in his own time, and his own way. And as we believe God and we trust God, we are going to see the power of God move. Now, I need to be open and say, God, come and work in my life. Come and bring me to the place that you created me in the way that you created me, in the fullness that you created me. Help me get rid of all of the things that are hindering me so that I can get to the fullness of what you have. Lead me, guide me, direct me. Teach me, change me. Yes, change me. God is going to have to change you. 
You can't change yourself. You know, I love New Year's resolutions. It's the best thing to show that we can't do something. You know, we make a promise every year. Okay, this year I'm going to do ABC. All right, third day in, fourth day in, we are, we're back into the old way. We cannot change ourselves. You know that saying that a leopard cannot change its spots? It's true. But God who created the leopard can change the spots. God created you. He can change you. Not in your own strength, but by the power of the living God. And as you allow God to work in your life, there will be changes. There will be things that he's going to shift in your life. And so I want us just to get this concept sorted out. God's not finished with me and he's not finished with you. Number two, we are not dealing with the same issue at the same time. Number three, I cannot do it in my own strength. Only God can do it. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says this, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, Above all that we can ask or even think. Now, I wanted to stop there. Can you imagine how awesome this is going to be? You think of this awesome thing in your life, and God says, I've got it bigger than that. Even bigger than what you can think. Now, look, some people can think small. I'm not on the small scale. Okay, I can still think quite big. But God's word says, that even bigger than what I can even imagine or think, God wants to do for me. I want to tell you, that's an awesome level. That is an amazing level, because like I said, I can think big. I have no problem thinking big and bigger than most around me. But God's saying, I can do better than that. And so... More than what you think of yourself, more than what you think you are capable of, more than what you think God wants to use you, God is going to do it. But the second part of this verse has the power, the, the key to it. Let's go. Let's read it again. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask, according to the power that works in us. According to the power that works in us. It is the power of God that is going to change me. It is the power of God that's going to bring these things into my life. It is the power of God that's going to create what needs to be created in my life. How many of you know that it's exciting to see a miracle take place? And to know that God is busy with something in our lives. And so what I have to do, let's take a family. I have to now look at each one in my family. I have to pray and say, Holy Spirit, you work in their lives. Not me try and fix it. Now, I'm not talking about parental guidance as a small child, where we give the instruction, okay, and we give the guidance. I'm talking about when your child becomes a teenager, when your child even starts you know, leaving school. What do you do then? You pray that the Holy Spirit will start ministering to them. That the power of God, that the seeds that have been planted into their lives will start germinating. You can't force it. You can't fake it. You can't get them to even act in the right way because that is not a genuine change. Remember, only God can do this. But you have to take the approach. God's not finished it. And when we get frustrated, even with ourselves, God, I'm working on this thing. I'm not getting the victory in this thing. Just relax. And say, Holy Spirit, come and work in me. Holy Spirit, come and do this thing inside of me. Holy Spirit, come and bring me to where I need to be. Holy Spirit, come and change the attitudes, the elements, the mindsets, the, the, the vision. Come and change what needs to be changed so that I can be mature. And I want you to know 
You are so, so important. Because the Bible says that you are God's glory. God created man. That is the ultimate creation that he's made. That's why Satan hates you so much. That's why Satan is busy trying to connive and, and wangle and deceive people so that he could take them to hell. Hell was never created for human beings. Hell was only created for Satan in his cohorts. But man has chosen to follow that path and man has chosen to go down that road. Now God's not going to interfere because God is a God of free will. He needs man to choose him out of his own, not forced to do something. So I want to just say this. Many people have come to me and said, listen, I know God's working on me. I know God is uh, busy with something and he's taking me to a place. And I know that I've got a calling. I know that I've got a destiny. I know that he's got a purpose for me. But I'm not sure whether I'm on path or what God has for me. I'm not 100% sure that I'm on path. Right? Let's go look. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Because this is really important. Listen to this. It is God who works. In you. So I want to just stop there. God works in you. If you're a believer, God is going to work in you. And if you have children, you have a family, all you do is pray and say, God, you work in them. Don't try and fix them. Don't try and change them. Don't try and influence them. You pray. So Holy Spirit, you do the work. Because when the Holy Spirit does the work, it is final, it is secure, and it's done. Now, let's go back to my life. God is working in me, both to will and to do His good pleasure. What does that mean? It means God comes and He puts His will, the desire to do something for God. Now, if you're a business person, you've had a desire to start your own business. All right, if you teach, you've had a desire to teach, whatever it is. Whatever it is that's burning inside of you, what is that passion that's burning inside of you? That was God-given. So God puts inside of you the desire to do His will. Now, His will isn't just obeying the Bible, and it is that. But His will is for you to do a specific function on this earth. And the Bible says, that not only does He give you the will, but also to do His good pleasure. So in other words, He gives me the will, the desire to do it, as well as the ability to go and fulfill it. And so I want to ask you today, what is this thing that's burning inside of you? What is the thing that you are, you've got a strong passion for? The thing that you are drawn to. You see, God is busy calling us. And He's going to lead us. The Holy Spirit's going to do this work. He's going to come and fix me. He's going to change me. He's going to bring me into the place of having the will of God in my life. And to do it. To do His good pleasure. So when I do it, I don't see it as work. I don't see it as a sacrifice. I don't see it as difficult. I just do it because I'm enjoying it. Let me take my life. When God gave me the gift of teaching, okay, He gave me a desire to teach the Word. When I had that encounter with God when I was 16 years old and I got the gift of teaching, I immediately wanted to teach people. I had a desire to teach people by 16 I was already running um, Bible study groups. I used to have young people come together and we used to teach. And I used to have up to 20 to 30 odd every time. And we would teach. Every Saturday we would teach. We would call it a, a youth growth seminar. And I will just teach topics upon topics like this. And we started to grow and we started to get going and we started to equip ourselves and it was awesome. But I never saw that as work. 
When I need to come and prepare something for the body of Christ, some teaching or lecture, I don't see it as work. I love it. Why? Because I see the fruit of God's word in your life. I know that God gave me a gift to help the body of Christ. It's not my gift. So God gave me a gift. He gave me the world to do it. And he gave me the ability to go and do his good pleasure. And so when I go and do it, I'm enjoying it. I enjoy people's lives being changed. I enjoy Satan being cut off and the influence of him off your life. Where every single time the devil has a foothold, we close that foothold. Every single time the devil tries something, when it comes to kill, steal or destroy, the truth of God comes and sets you free, sets you free, sets you free. Now our focus is not the devil. My focus is you. My focus is to let you stand up in what God called you to do. Let you understand who you are in Christ. Let you understand the power that you operate in. But tonight, I want you to get this concept. God's not finished with you. God's not finished with me. We've still got a way to go, but God is busy with us. Let's go to Colossians chapter 129. To this end I also labor, this is Paul speaking, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. So Paul, well, let's just step one step back. Okay? How many of us would have taken somebody like Paul and said, Yo, Paul, you're doing a great work. How many of us would like to be like Paul? Had a revelation of three quarters of the New Testament, wrote the New Testament. Okay? And yet Paul's saying, It's God working in me. God is working through Paul. God is working through you and God is working through me. Our functions are totally different. You must do what God called you to do. I cannot do what God has called you to do. And guess what? Just because it doesn't look spiritual doesn't mean it's not. What do I mean by that? You go, I'm, I'm just a car mechanic. Who said that that is not a spiritual job? Who said that every time you work on somebody's car that you bless it and bring godly input into it? Pray God's protection over the family that drives that car. All right, no matter what your job is, you can be anointed for that position. Because society needs all of us. And you can be a sweeper in a school. And as you're sweeping the halls, you can be releasing the power of God and declaring that this land is God's land. That these children are dedicated to the Lord. I want to tell you right now, every one of us have a spiritual function. Don't measure it by whether you spend so much time in the Word or not. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you the Word Equip you so that you can do your function. Okay? Mine just happens to be in the Word. Yours might be totally different that you hardly open the Bible. Does not mean that it's not spiritual. It's very important that we understand that. Okay? So I want to just minister this to us today. God is in a process of sorting me out, of giving me an equipment to do what I need to do, to give me His desire to do it, to anoint me to become the best person that He created me for. I want us to go back to that scripture of Paul. And I want you to listen carefully. Now just think of this. Can just get this concept operating in your life? Because I think that this is the crux of everything. 
When you are busy in whatever God called you to do, change your attitude and view of it and say this. To this end I labor. To this end I'm a mechanic. To this end I'm an accountant. Whatever you are. Striving according to his working. God's working. Which works in me mightily. Allowing God to work in you. To fulfill that task or function that you mean to do. And God is going to give you favor. God's going to give you increase. God's going to give you promotions. When you allow the Spirit of God to work in you. Why? Because He can trust you. And so tonight I want to ask you this. Have you judged somebody else? Even worse, have you judged yourself? Have you thought that you're not good enough? Have you measured yourself up to somebody that looks more spiritual than you and say, I'm not going to make it? Please, whatever you do, the worst thing you can do is measure yourself against me. Okay? Just because my function is on front line and more public does not make it any more important than the cashier who is busy paying as I go through the tolls and helping me pay for groceries. There is no difference with importance. The important thing is, are you doing what God called you to do? Are you prepared to realize, I'm not, God's not finished with me yet. So if God's not finished with me, he's not finished with you. So I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to get into things. I'm going to allow God to do the work in your life. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you right now that you are going to stir it up in our hearts. Lord, that we will know that you are working in each one of us. Lord, that you're going to bring us to that place of destiny and purpose in Jesus' name. Lord, that we are not going to be the same again. And Lord, that we are going to do something supernatural by your Spirit in our lives. And Lord, I pray right now that you are going to bring us to the place of destiny and purpose and the fullness that you have for us. Lord, greater than what anybody has ever thought. Bigger than what we can imagine. Because we have allowed the Spirit of God to work in our lives. Thank you, God, that you are not finished with us. Thank you, God, that you have not stopped for one second. But God, I thank you that from today, we are going to work hard and strive to labor according to the work that is working in us. The power of God that is busy in us. And we thank you for this time together in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, saints, I want to encourage you. Remember this. God is busy with you and He's going to finish the job that He started. But I want to say this. If you do not have a local church, I want you to seriously consider joining us at Father's Art Digital Church. We run church over the nation. We run through small groups. And we are not looking to establish big structures and buildings. We are looking to establish people. And so I want you to consider this. To become part of Father's Art Digital Church. Please go to fathersart.co.za and you can enroll for a membership there. So God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. And remember this week that's coming up. Wherever you go, just remember this statement. The statement. God's not finished with me. God's not finished with me. God's not finished with me in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Have an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow for communion. Amen and amen.